Uh, hello and welcome to episode one of uh, Let's Talk uh, Brand. Uh, this is the first uh, in Poland series of interviews uh, with world-class branding experts. And today I have uh, Matt Davis, um, who is brand and culture strategy consultant based in UK. Uh, Matt is also a Level C certified brand uh, strategist. Uh, he has been personally taught by the world-renowned brand expert Marty uh, Niemeyer. He helps businesses leaders to align around what their brand should mean to their customers and their employees. He uses storytelling, agile strategy and design thinking to create more meaningful customer and employee experiences. Uh, welcome to the podcast, uh, Matt. Thank you so much for having me on. And, uh, you know, it's a it's an honor to be your first victim. <laughs> so thank you, thank you, thank you for, for that, that accolade. I appreciate it. <laughs> And um, of course, uh, today I would like to talk um, about brand and um, the branding strategy because my idea is to, to, to simplify um, all this um, um, complicated theory. And um, uh, so we probably would start with some, uh, some definitions because in my opinion, this is a must to understand uh, correctly brand building and uh, branding. Um, um, so let's just um, clean up um, this branding rooms room of uh, definitions and uh, let's start with some basics uh, what right. is your definition of brand and branding sure well um i think it's quite ironic that uh, that that when we talk about brand it has a bit of an identity crisis like it's difficult to kind of you know what is a brand like what is that and, and a lot of people the most like average people on the street you'd maybe say what is a brand and they would say oh it's it's a logo right? But I don't think that's a very helpful definition for business, right? Because brand has got to be better than the logo. Because if we want to build a, a better brand, if we want to make more, make more money and sell more stuff, um, and we think to do that, we need to build a better brand, does that therefore mean we just need to design the logo a little bit better? Well, clearly not. We know that that doesn't work, right? So what is a brand? Like, how do we really define it? And uh, well, there's lots of definitions out there, you know, and I'm not saying my definition is the only definition that we should use. But for me, when I'm talking to people, I define brand as the meaning that other people, that customers attach to you and your offer. So the brand is that kind of, it's the meaning that they they have in their hearts, in their minds. It's the emotions that that, that kind of, unearths it's the the practical thinking of you know what am i going to get out of this brand it's all of those things that come together and they create meaning in their minds whether ultimately to buy or not to buy your product or your service now that definition is kind of scary to business leaders often because um what they what 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 we like to do is we like to think that we're in control of everything right that this is our brand like we own it and uh, you know we 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 say what it is but the, the truth is, is that the power has shifted, right? You can no longer just show up and tell people stuff and they just believe it. That's long gone. You know, what you can do is, is do what is do branding, which is what the game that I'm in, right? Which is um, to help people manage the meaning. It's the kind of audacious pursuit of the management of meaning. And that's huge because that touches actually on every aspect of a business. Um, it touches on employees, how you look after them. It touches on product development. It touches on your processes. It touches on customer service and customer experience. It touches on a number of things, which maybe we can get into in a minute. But the thing is, is it has to be big like that. And brand is big. It is, it is, it is something which has to flow from the top right to the bottom and back up again. Like it's a kind of a, it's kind of a huge topic. And that's why I think we get confused, Lucas, with, with it. Well, what, what is it? Well, if you think about it, like you're trying to manage the meaning of the whole of the business and the whole of the way that business shows up for the customer, that actually I think is is the right thing. So it's huge. Okay. So, but how to manage that meaning? Sure. Okay. So how do we manage the meaning? Right. This is this is the one. This is the big. This is the big question. This is, um, and I don't think we've got. Um, my, my view is that that nobody's got the the killer answer to this. We all look for the silver bullet, like you know, what process should we go through, and then we're all sorted. I don't think we've got there yet, and the reason we've not got there is because 
all customers are different, all categories are different, and all teams are different, all leadership teams are different, and all the employees are different. So we've got companies that are doing it well, but even people, if you speak to within those companies, they will think there's areas that they need to improve. It's an ever ongoing mission to, to manage meaning. But there are some things, some basics, which we need to do, right? So the first mm. thing we need to do is we need to, to, in order to manage the meaning, well, we need to define the meaning to start with, right? And that, that's kind of um, a really kind of a key piece of the puzzle. That's where we start. And I say start because a lot of people think, oh, I've done my branding now and I've defined it and I don't need to do anything else. Well, no, no, no. Once you've defined it, that's the beginning of the adventure. And the adventure continues on after you've defined it. And the key thing is, is how you execute on it because everybody can, can think and strategize, but unless you're executing on it, you're obviously going to fail miserably. So when I say define it, what are we talking about here? What are we talking about in terms of definition? Well, again, there's a number of frameworks out there. Um, I try and keep it, you said, let's keep it simple. I like to keep things simple. I'm a simple person. And I think we make, businesses make things so complicated, right? And at the end of the day, if, we, if we're trying to organize a lot of people so that the, the, the customer gets the right meaning, if we're trying to organize all those people, we can't be complicated because you'll have a graduate who enters a business at the bottom and you'll have, you know, a high flying, you know, senior executive at the top. You have to point all of the people in uh, those people and everybody in between in the same direction. And if you make it really complicated, nobody's going to understand what on earth they're supposed to do. So I define uh, I use, you know, a number of frameworks, but the, the basics are to answer the big questions to start with. So the big questions of brand for me are, why do we exist beyond making money? Who do we serve? And why should they choose us? How do we show up in a relevant way? And what is our offer and proposition? So, you know, a why, how, uh, why, how, who, and what kind of process uh, sort of set of questions. Now, I can talk a little bit about each of those if that would that, would that help, uh, Lucas, to sort of unpack those four big questions mm -hmm. if you like that? All right. So um, first one, like, why do we exist beyond making money? Why do we need an answer to that? Well, first of all, you know, a lot of businesses, if you say, why do you exist? And they will say, well, we, uh, you know, we exist to, to make money for our shareholders, for our board. You know, we're, we're, this year we're doing, you know, 80 million euros. Next year we want to do 120 or whatever they've got, you know. And I always say to clients who say that to me, well, you know, that's fantastic that you want to get rich, right? That's, that's great. And, you know, that's fine for you. But I don't care, right? And none of your customers care that you want to get rich. And in fact, none of your staff care that you and the board want to get rich. So it's not going to motivate anyone other than you to have mm -hmm. those sorts of targets. And I'm not decrying those targets. They're important because, you know, we need to have ambition. We need to have drive. We need to have you know, people reaching for the next big thing, but they just don't motivate customers. So how do we motivate customers? Well, that's when we have to come up with a reason, a genuine reason, an authentic reason outside of the money scenario in order to kind of get people excited. And Simon Sinek, um, the great, uh, you know, the great speaker, I, I'm, I don't know if you've heard his TED Talk start with why, he articulates it really well, uh, you know, when he says, basically, people don't buy what you do um, they buy why you do it. They get much more involved, a lot more emotionally connected with the why. So, so why we do it. And so when, when I unpack that, what does that mean? I often get leadership teams to, to really um, do a few things. They've got to, they've got to think internally, like, why do I show up for work as a leader? What, what, what gets me excited? What drives me forward? So often the, the, the sort of work that I do is spending a lot of time with leaders individually and then getting them together as a group and saying look you know we 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 all are really excited about this key thing i think this is your key your core your core purpose your core driver this is why you're doing what you're doing so let's define the purpose and let's define the big vision for the brand you know so i i usually come up with um a purpose and a a vision statement that everyone can say yep 
we are, that's what we're trying to do here. That's really what we're about. Sometimes you might even go down into some of the employees and listen to what they have to say, because, you know, as I say, it's, it's not just a top down thing. It kind of, it should be both ways, but ultimately the leaders have got to make a decision. They're there to lead. That's their responsibility. So they've got to set that. So that's the first kind of, um, first kind of thing. You've got to have a why it's got a link with the commercial strategy, but it isn't the commercial strategy. It's it's more emotional. It's a little bit more creative. We should start with why, um, because um, okay, from the, the day one, the Tom's company um, you probably know, yeah, well known <laughs> company has been committed to using business to improve lives, and actually they started with why, and they can do anything uh, if it helps. They they of course sell it to choose. Um, and there's uh, this um, um, this one for one um, um, project, um, but they can actually do any business um, if it helps. Uh, but most of the companies start with the product or with the service, and then they think uh, why they do this and um, how to craft this why sentence and this reason why we exist. Should should this be a kind of the general sentence, the, the big sentence, or how, how to do this? in a proper way. Yeah, so so any sentence, in my view, uh, that you come up with from a strategic perspective needs to be short and it needs to be easily understood, but it needs to be emotional. Like it needs to have some heart to it, some spark to it. If it's just, we exist to sell nuts and bolts to builders, it doesn't really excite you, you know? Whereas if it's like, we exist to provide, um, you know, to, 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 to build better a better world, suddenly you're like, oh, that's quite exciting, right? You know, so the thing is, is you've got to be exciting uh, in it. And I would say, how should you do it? it? It it should be, for me, it needs to be collaborative as the leadership team. Like, it can't just be slapped on at the end, right? These are our statements, right? It has to be something that they also have bought into and engaged with and worked with. Um, and that's, that's the magic, really. That's why people like me exist, right? Because, you know, you need almost sometimes an outsider to come in and and right, kind of get everybody going and challenge things and, you know, do the research and come with a fresh mind to it. Um, so I would say you've got to focus. You've got to do it collaboratively. And that's, you know, you mentioned that I work in an agile way. That's, you know, that's one of the ways that I I, I do things. I make sure that you know, we get everybody on a Zoom call or on a, you know, on, on in a meeting if you know in, in a workshop, and we 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 get this done, and we get it done in a way that that everybody is excited about. But that's usually informed by research, and it's informed by interviews with the leaders themselves on a one-to-one -one basis, and usually informed by what the staff feel as well, like why they why they show up to work. So how how we do it? We keep it simple. I've got frameworks and structures which I won't bore you with, but well, I'll, I'll do one quickly. I have one, it's called the purpose statement, and I'll try and remember it if effectively. It says, um, our purpose is to do some something, like a contribution. What are we, what, are, what is our contribution? So that there's some sort of impact and outcome. So define that. Um, because, and then there's some sort of belief or um, reason behind why you're doing it. And usually that needs to be big. That needs to be like a social reason. It needs to have a, a benefit to the planet, to the world, to other human beings, you know, whatever it might be. Now, if you take that three, three pronged approach, you know, our purpose is to do this so that this happens because of something that, and, and if you get the leadership team to all kind of individually initially maybe show up with their version of that and then get down and pin them up on a wall or put them on you know put them on a slide deck and show everybody then you can see where the themes are and where the themes are not where people are thinking about the customer and where people are thinking about themselves and so what i would do is spend a bit of time with that leadership team pushing them to put the customer first to think about well yeah this is our purpose but but how does that excite other people now, how would that excite the customer? And it has to be authentic. So we have to kind of marry. It's a, it's a bit of a dance between what we are and what the customer needs and what the customer wants. And it's kind of that, that kind of dance between it. But once you've got that statement, the power of that is huge because suddenly you can look at everything and all the other things I'll talk about in a minute. You can look at everything through that lens. Does this fit with our purpose, with, with, 
with with our with our reason for being, with our why, with our because statement. You know, does this does this really fit together? And if the thing that we're thinking about doesn't, then it's not relevant to that brand. You know, and we have to be ruthless in our decision making. Then just because you know, Larry, the leader, leader Larry in the corner, he's championing it and he's very you know very passionate for it. If it doesn't fit with what the brand is is to stand for that we all agreed six months ago, then it it cannot be, Larry. Sorry, Larry, you're going to have to think of something else. Um, or fine, do that, Larry, but it's separate to this brand. It will confuse the customer. It will dilute what we're trying to achieve here. So, very powerful strategic tool. Um, shall I go on to a couple of other things, L Lucas? Would that be okay. all right? So, it, so it just this why just adds an energy drives and facilitates decision making. But do you think that this this, this why should be known by prospects as well, or um, this why emanates through your communication, your, your mission? And do yeah, you think great, great question, you know? great question. So um, I often get this. And everyone hates it because I always go, well, it depends, right? It depends what we're trying to we're trying to do here, and it also depends on the market you're in and what and you know and that kind of thing. For me, the purpose, um, I, I, it doesn't bother me if it goes out. It should be something that you know you can you can 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 be public facing. In fact, one thing I would say is all the statements in a strategy you shouldn't be ashamed of, and you shouldn't be worried that other people might see it because at the end of the day employees move around right and you know people talk so you you it's not a secret it's not like oh this is a secret no one will ever you know only we'll know so for me yeah it it can be it can be shown it can be on an about us page of a website it doesn't do any damage in fact you know i know some suppliers some some b2b brands are looking for other businesses to partner with who share common values, for example, who share common purpose. So um, it can actually do you a, a world of good. But um, all I'd say is, is you're not going to normally lead with this in, say, a in an ad campaign or a product campaign, usually. This is a strategy which is the very high level. It's not a proposition to a customer at this stage. This is This stuff is here to initially align your team so that they can execute on something which is quite complicated. So that's the purpose of, of, of a brand strategy, of a brand plan. It's just to align everybody. So everybody conceptually can say, yes, I know where we're going now. I know that the, the many decisions I'm making fit with this, so I know I'm, out, I'm on track. And that's the, that's the main thing. When you want to go out into the market and you want to show up, there's other things that you need to think about. And that's where kind of the... The, the blend comes between brand strategy and marketing um, because marketing in my view is more about the execution and it's about, you know, it's about kind of like how we show up and what we say, whereas brand is kind of, well, what are we doing about this? How are we actually, um, you know, strate strategically going to, going to build something? So I don't know if that answers your question, but for me, don't be ashamed um, okay. of, of what so you've done. We could, well, I think we're going to move to the, to the next big brand question. Okay, that's um, that's who who do we serve, and why should they choose us, right? And that is massive. Like that is, I would say that's the the core, because as I mentioned at the start, the brand is the is is what other is is what the the customer, you know, the meaning that they attach to us. The brand is the meaning they attach to us. So we need to really understand them. And there's a couple of kind of really interesting things to think about here. Um, I think traditionally, what we've done in business is we have, um, we've, and I think this comes out of like the industrial revolution, right? We have a factory, we make dustbins um, for trash, you know, we make a dustbin and we say, well, we're the dustbin company, right? So that's what, that's, that's what we do. We make dustbins, thousands of them coming out of our factory, thousands and thousands of them. So that's the game we're in. And, and so we just run around trying to find, people to buy our dustbins, right? So, you know, then, you know, as time went on, we had advertising and literally it was just like, we broadcast our message, we interrupt everybody and we say, hey, buy my dustbin, <laughs> right? And people will be like, most people, 99% of people will be like, I don't need a dustbin. I don't want a dustbin. So you say, okay, that's fine. But there's 1% that do. And so they buy your dustbin. So then 
the aim of the game there is to broadcast, 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 broadcast as much as possible. Um, and, uh, and, you know, because we've started with the product. Um, now, who knows whether people even like the product or not? You know, it's it, in, in, you know, early days, everyone was grateful to just have a product, right? But time's moved on. Now we've got huge competition. We're in a global economy. We have other people in other parts of the world that might be able to make things cheaper than us, deliver it faster than us, whatever it might be. So the functions of the product and the, and the, and the actual fact that we've got a product is not enough anymore. We have to think bigger than the product. And this is where companies struggle because they're still in the mindset like we're in the dustbin factory. We make dustbins. You know, what do you mean think bigger? Um, and how would we even begin to think bigger? So very sort of briefly, obviously, there's a lot of theory that we could pack away inside of this. But but the the the, the right answer, the brand answer is to not start with the product. The, the right answer is to start with the customer. So this is why this question, like, who do we serve and why should they choose us is the most one of the most important questions, right? Because if we know that we want to serve, you know, a particular type of person and we can build not just a product, but an offering that really solves their problems, that really helps them become stronger, that gives them an identity, that that really, you know, helps them um, with whatever need that they have, we almost want to give them that gift. Um, and, and I think that's a great way of thinking about it. Like if we understand that we're, say, for example, we're, we're serving single moms, you know, who are struggling at home with, you know, with, 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 with children and childcare and trying to juggle that with work. And we spend time with those types of people and we look at their lives and we, and we find like, what is the thing that they need? If we can provide that gift to them, and we start small. We start with looking really, you know, at what they need. What we'll find is, is we will get far more loyalty, far more, um, uh, you know, we'll be able to charge far more and we'll create far more meaning. And it might not just be the product that we sell them. It might be the product and a service and a, and a whole experience of how they can buy it. It might even be um, that as well as the product and the services, we we also have kind of community uh activities so that they can join something and other people who are similar to them I call it you know we call it the tribe they can join the tribe and suddenly now we're really making them stronger and that's the biggest question it shouldn't just be transactional it shouldn't just be like oh buy our stuff to make us rich it should be a two-way thing like yeah you're going to spend some money with us but that's not the priority here the priority is you and where you need to go and what you need to become and we're going to help you with that and people then won't mind giving up their money because when they buy from us, it really solves their problems. So we've got to define who are these people and we've got to really understand them. So I do stuff like um, uh, look at personas, you know, and try and work on hypothetical per personas. But usually it's around the desires and the beliefs of those people that that you want to hone in on. I think traditionally we've said, oh, you know, um, you know, women at the age of, you know, this gender, this age this income these are all f sort of demographics which have their place but where you really want to land is in the psychographics like what do these people believe what do they want what do they desire what do they need um and that will then help you create what we would call the positioning strategy so you define the customer and you understand what they need and then you work on well okay so what are the customer's options they need this thing kind of where where would they go to get that thing at the moment? And you listen to them and you understand the decisions that they're trying to make. And then what you've got to figure out is, well, and this is why there's a second part to this question, why should they choose us? What you've got to figure out is, is well, if they could, if if they could do all these other things, why are we different? Like why should, why is our thing better for that person? And if you don't have the right answer for that, if you if you're not different and you're not better and it's not it's not compelling, the truth is what you'll then need to do is you know innovate. You need to recognize that, accept that, hold your hands up and say, well, we're not actually that different. We're not really helping this person very much, so we need to do something about that. And that is you know that's that's scary for people as well. But that is all part of brand strategy, I would say. So I've probably waffled on way too much there, but 
but there's a lot packed away in that who question. Okay, but um, um, Al Alaris said to me that we shouldn't focus on um, customers, but we should only focus on our uh, competitors because at the moment, at this moment, um, um, our competitor is already satisfying the customer needs, and um, and the game is about um, is, is about getting that client and showing him um, uh, that we can um, do it do something in a, in a different way uh, because already um, our customers buy from our uh, competitors and this, so, so, but I think the truth is in the middle um, uh, well because, can, I, because, can I come in on that just very quickly so that is a possibility that is possible um, it depends what you're trying to do here because if you're satisfied with trying to steal customers off of your competitors, then that is that, and strategically that can work. And I'm not against that. But for me, it's kind of like, well, is that really what this is about? Is it about stealing customers? Like the the, the trouble is, is then you'd innovate a bit, then customers come over to you, then your competitor responds, and they do something, and then they co all that they all run. You know, where are we going to end with this? What it's I not stealing is getting is giving them a better choice. <laughs> Giving them a better choice. Well, yeah, but what if what if you could innovate something or create something, um, you know? And there is a kind of a stream of of uh, of of brand which is is kind of radical differentiation, radical innovation, you know. And and there's whole whole books written around. Um, I don't know if you've heard of Blue Ocean Strategy, but um, there's a whole technique you can use to create stuff that that is different, that's completely different, that that the competitor can't compete with. Um, and that's for me. That's the gold standard: is to really get to your, know your customer to such a degree that you've created something completely unique that that nobody can copy. And that is the that's the gold standard. You could just go, oh, we'll tinker around the edges and uh, steal a few customers from our from our competitor, and fine. Uh, you know, there's there's nothing wrong with that. But for me, it's kind of like, well, why would we do that if we have an opportunity? If we have a leadership team that want to make a difference, that want to make change. And we start with the customer, uh, I say start with the customer and figure out what they really want. And yeah, you know, you'll understand they're going to your competitor for these reasons. Okay, well, but is that, you know, is there something better we can do? Can we do something really, really remarkable that that is meeting an unmet need? And that is really rich picking grounds. And if you're mm -hmm. first to that, you know, it's hard for competitors to steal off you, to steal your customers because they they love you. You've helped them. You've solved their problem. Look at Apple. Like, you know, it's going to be hard for people to shift from Apple. Why? Because Apple solved a number of their problems. They've got all of their software. They've got all of their calendars. Everything's linked together. You know, just as a, it's a whole ecosystem of solutions. And once you buy into that, you know, it's hard to shift. So, you know, you can create whole worlds, whole environments for customers that you know is, is is much more powerful than potentially um you know just trying to tweak a few things and hope that people a few people jump i don't know it's it's two they're, they're two different strategies i like to i like to go big lucas you know that's my kind of philosophy but you know i do have clients that want to you know that, that recognize the thing for me is is that a lot of clients recognize that they they are in red oceans in other words they're in a a marketplace and everybody's fighting over the same customer and it's you know blood everywhere it's awful um, and um, they know that that's not a great place to be. It's pretty awful to be competing like that. It's 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 really horrible. So they they don't want to be there. They want to go into the blue ocean, which is like there is no sharks. They want to create something that is completely unique, that um that 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 really they can be really proud of. You know that they're not just copying or trying to go one better of something that already exists. They're the types of clients I like to work with. And when you when you when you think about that as a concept, um, you know, I actually think the world would be a better place if we try and divide up and really create brilliant services and products for very specific people. And I think there's enough room in the marketplaces, my, that's my view, to, to, to kind of really do that. If we try and go really big and we're creating solutions that are kind of, they just become vanilla and they just become, um, you know, me too. And I think what we want as consumers as time goes on is meaning. We don't want more stuff. We want more meaning. We want to. We want a, more, more of a kind of a um, of a, of things that we choose. And I think you said it before. Like we want offerings that are a little bit more different. That 
that that kind of say something about us. So I think there's a lot of um, there's a lot of scope um, to kind of be different um, and create really unique offerings if we if we're brave enough is the is the is the real kind of kicker. Oh, but that's what I was going to say very quickly. I think it's hard for traditional businesses who perhaps are in the mindset of being in a particular category and shipping products, which is you know which is what they look at like oh we're shipping all these products to suddenly rethink about themselves to think about the customer to think about the outcome that the customer is trying to achieve and then to orientate themselves to that outcome so i've got a client at the moment and it takes years like it, it can be very quick but often it takes years so we're in a space right now where we yeah we are going to um just kind of improve what we have but at the same time we're going to be looking into the future, 10, 20 years. We're going to set up a little innovation hub for the brand. We're going to set up a customer insights panel, which we're going to use to listen. And we're going to, you know, we're going to really kind of have a program of events that will design the way forward in a way that that's going to completely radicalize and change that business. And the leadership teams are on board, but it's it's going to be, you know, it's going to be years. So you know, for that business, it's it's a, a big, big old sort of elephant, if you like. It can't turn very quickly. But that that's the thing is, is they've got a plan. They they've they're rooted in their brand, and they all are really excited about where it can lead to. And I think that is what should drive a company: value to the customer, not just we want to get rich. And by the way, they will get rich as well. But the focus isn't on that. The focus is on doing something great for the world, and that's far more satisfying. Okay. So what is the next uh, big question? Because I think we can discuss all these big questions for an hour. Sorry, yeah. I get excited, Lucas. I get excited. We, we'll have to do some more another time. Okay. So I'll, I'll, brief, I'll briefly go into the other two. They're not quite as long. So the, the next one was how do we show up in a relevant way? Um, and so just packed away behind that, I think you need to define your brand values. You need to work on your people strategy, your employee experience, and your culture because all of your people are like a touch point for your brand. So you've got to make sure they have a great employee experience so the customer has a great experience, and all of that is grounded in the brand. Um, you've obviously got to have a marketing and the sales strategy. Um, you know, that, and, and this is where I think, um, you know, we, businesses have got things the wrong way around. We, we put brand underneath marketing, and marketing leads the show, whereas I think it needs to be the other way around. Brand needs to gov govern the overarching strategy, and marketing needs to fit with that strategy. Um, so that's uh, that's kind of uh, a few thoughts on that. And one other thing packed away in that is I would always work with a client on um, their customer experience strategy. So, you know, how do we take somebody from not knowing about us at all through to being aware of us, through to all the touch points in our marketing, through to actually making a decision, maybe picking up the phone or speaking to somebody or coming into our store and then they buy something. What does that feel like? What's the packaging like? All of the strategy behind that. And then after they've bought it, what are we doing for them to, to keep the relationship going? You need to map all of that out and you need to look at it through the lens of, of, the, of, the, of the purpose and the why and the, and the, and the really, the, is this different? Is this adding value? And you've got to kind of really do a lot of work on that. And then you've got to obviously execute. So there's a lot packed away in, in the how as well. And then finally, what is our offer uh, and proposition? I think that that needs to be the simplest thing, right? That needs to be, well, we are doing this for you because of these reasons, and this is why it's brilliant. You know, it needs to be a proposition so that, and everybody should know that, you know, from a graduate right the way to the top. And in fact, I think everybody should know the basic top level answer to all these questions um, that the leadership team sort of set. But that last one, the what, what are we actually doing? I think that can be really simple and really easy for people to kind of grasp. So that's that's my four questions, and and as I say, packed behind that is a lot of lot of thinking, um, and that's the model that I tend to use. But as I say, no business is the same, um, so I I flex things up and down depending on the objectives of of my clients and and what they need to achieve. Okay, you you said that one of the big brand questions is who do we serve and. Um, yeah where the knowledge about the customer comes from. How yeah. do we know who we serve? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very good question. And um, okay, so part, it's again, it's part, it's, it's part what we want, 
and part what is real, right? So um, I think the thing for me is I would always start with, um, well, two things. I would start with the leaders, like who do we want to serve, right? That's the key thing. Who do you want to serve? You know, and that needs to fit with your purpose. So if we're trying to, um, I don't know, let's take that example that I said, I know, help people build a better world, right? And we're in the, traditionally we're in the, we're selling nuts and bolts and screws, right? Let's go really basic, right? Um, we're helping people build a better world. So who are those people, right? Who are the people that we're going to help build the better world, right? Um, it Does it make sense that it's builders, you know, and people in the building trade? Yes. Okay. Because they're the ones building the better world. Great. Um, but then is it just all builders? You know, we need to think about, well, what types, what do they believe? You know, they could, as you, to your point, they could go to a number of places that sell nuts and bolts and screws and nails. Why are they going to come to us? What do they really want? You know, and so you need to work through their needs and desires. Um, they, they, they need, you know, good supply chain. They need, you know, speed. They need, what do they need, right? You need to look at that. And then you go talk to those types of people and you find, ah, these, this guy, he needs, he's in our, he fits the profile. So let's talk to him or her and let's, let's unpack that. Why do you need that? Why do you do your job? Oh, I do my job because I get a sense of pride when I've, you know, built something. And suddenly you can build up, a, a, as I say, not just the demographic, but the psychographic of the type of person you want to meet. And you might meet another one who fits the demographic, but they're like, they have a different need. I don't know. They, um, I'm literally thinking off the top of my head here, Lucas, so bear with me. But, you know, maybe they're thinking, um, oh, I, I, I just need this because I don't really, I don't really like my job. Um, I, in fact, I want to be something else. I want to be a, a, an astronaut, right? So I'm just doing it as a stopgap before I get to where I want to go. So now you have two types of belief system. One person that really loves it and is in it for the long term, who gets a sense of pride, and another person who doesn't really care about it, you know, and is just doing it as a stopgap. Now you have a strategic choice. Who do we want in our tribe? So you've got to listen a lot to what's going on. It is a bit of magic. I've got to be honest. It's not, it's not like we're all robots. We're humans, right? We have different ways of thinking. But what you'll find is eventually you'll settle on someone and you think, so in that instance, you'll think, well, which type of customer is going to help us really fulfill our purpose? The one that doesn't really care or the one that really cares? So suddenly you say, well, it's the one that cares. You know, they're, they're really going to be our tribe. Ah, okay. So now we're going to spend more time with those types of people. So the point is you can segment. We, we're used to segmenting audience based on, you know, on the market and our perception of the market, which is, and all of that is, in my view, is a little bit, you know, is a bit redundant now because we're buying globally. We're buying in tribes. We're buying, we actually buy from, uh, you know, and think in terms of belief systems. So if I know you and I believe the same sort of thing, I would say to you, uh, uh, Lucas, like, what do you think about this? And you'd say, oh, I'd buy from this type of brand. And then that would make me think, oh, I would as well. Or I might check out your LinkedIn or your social media and I see you buying from that. And I know that we have a similar belief system that is far more influential to somebody than um, any marketing that comes into their minds. You know, the marketing has to be there, but but really we are buying in, in, in tribes. Um, and so when I boil all that down, what I'm trying to say is, is how do you select the audience? You have to spend time. You have to map it out. You have to figure it out. You have to spend, you know, spend time listening. And then you need to ask yourself in this ecosystem of people, in this sort of whole group of types of people that I've identified, which type are going to best help us fulfill our purpose? And that's the ones to select to, to really kind of make an impact with your brand. And then you've got to build all your services, all your offering around those people. It's not to say you'd exclude exclude anyone else, not at all. But it's that it's built for the for that type of person with that belief and that particular um, uh, you know that particular need. So that's my answer to that one. If I understand this correctly, so at the very beginning you should just imagine um, the tribe leader, how he looks like, how he behaves. What problems he or she have? Uh, am I right? Yeah. So I, I, I would start from that basis. Like initially, I would get the leadership team to imagine it. But then, mm -hmm. 
you can't just leave it there, right? You've got to, you've got to verify that, right? You've got to find those people. You've got to go and spend time and think and talk to them and, you know, share ideas with them and see what they're feeling and what they believe. Um, and that's why, you know, um, I mentioned before, like some of my clients, they don't have what I call listening posts. So what's a listening post? It's, um, it's a routine where you are actively engaging and listening to the type of person that you that you believe is right for your product and service and and brand if you don't know that you know you you can you can make some really big blunders you know you can really innovate create things that actually nobody wants you you know you're not testing you need to test all of the stuff and so you kind of need a person or a team a connector who's going to take what the leadership team think and try and verify that in the market in reality. And you've got to get the leaders, if possible, closer to the customer rather than sh shielded by you know hundreds of people between them and the end customer. You've got to get the leaders out maybe into, into focus groups or listening to focus groups, or you've got to present information that helps the leaders understand actually what's going on here and why the, that it makes sense to select a particular type of customer to create a service around. Otherwise, you're gonna you you can't just do it on imagination because you know who knows who knows what's gonna happen. Okay, but um, one more question. Um, actually, I have I have a lot of questions to you, but, but as it is episode one, so I I, I hope we can meet uh, meet again and go deep um, into some um, uh, some some details. But um, what is the difference between a purpose and the mission? I think this is sometimes a problem for the for the companies to to see the difference between these two. Yeah, and there's also vision as well, which is also slightly different. So I'll 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 try and unpack the three. So your purpose is um, it's really why why you get out of bed. So for me, the purpose is the why. It's the compelling reason that excites and ignites passion in the leadership team. It's what's worthwhile doing. Why we do it. The the mission should be about how we do it. Like it gives focus um, so that we can kind of make sure that we're on track to achieve the purpose. And the vision is way in the future, right? This is what we imagine the world to be like if we achieve our purpose. So the way I've heard it put sometimes is, is, is that the, the purpose should never change. It's like eternal, evergreen. The vision is usually five to 10 years time, this is how we imagine the world to be that will move us on towards, you know, to fulfilling a part of our purpose. And the mission is everything we're going to do between now and the time, uh, a summary of everything we're going to be doing between now and the time our vision is fulfilled. Now, the reason why you have those three split out like that, and, and, I, and I'm a massive advocate of this, and, and, you know, really, if anyone takes anything away from this interview, all I would say is, is, these are not just statements. These are these are, these should not just be a s sort of slapped on a wall and just kind of or put on a piece of paper and put in somebody's desk. These need to live. They need to breathe, and we need to basically use them to design our businesses around. So everything should ladder into the 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 mission, which ladders into the vision, which ladders into the purpose. And my initiative down here in the sales team, I know that if I'm doing X, Y, and Z, that's helping our company, our brand, fulfill its destiny. So if you if you just have these and you slap them on the wall and you don't connect with them and you don't build your, your routines, your one-to-ones, you don't hold people accountable to them, it's just pointless. It's got You've got to commit to this. And that's what I always say to my leadership teams that I work with. Like, if you're not ready to commit to this, don't call me in, right? There's no point. Unless we're going to do this properly, you know, don't bother because it's just, it's it's not, it's going to fail and then everyone's going to think brand strategy is a failure. We've got to really commit to this and try and strive to, to build and design our companies around these things. And if we do that, um, it's it leads to a, a far more satisfactory um, kind of uh, way of doing business other than we're just here to make money, which is an obvious thing and pretty boring, if you ask me. No, especially that it's not, not very easy to stand out today because the, the market is over, overcrowded. 
Yeah. Okay, Matt, uh, thank you so much. Um, um, it was a real pleasure to have you here and thank you for showing, uh, sharing, your, uh, sharing your knowledge. Um, um, if you would like to, to, to invite people to your channels, just please, please uh, in, do this. And, and yeah. This oh. is the moment so they can follow you and read your, your blog. Or That's whatever really, really kind, really kind. So, yeah, if you found this interesting, I've got a blog um, at mrmattdavies.me. So that's Mr. M-R, Matt, M-A-T-T, Davies, D-A-V-I-E-S, dot me. Um, and so you can follow that. You can subscribe for updates. I'm always pinging out interesting things that I find. I also have a um, my own podcast, if I may uh, drop that, Lucas, which I run with um, uh, Jacob Cass, who's a, a really cool uh strategist in Australia and that's called Just Branding and we are interviewing all sorts of people not too dissimilar to this uh, Lucas um, from around the world so you might find that of interest. Um, what else? Oh I'm a big LinkedIn fan so connect with me on LinkedIn uh, Matt G Davies it would be it would be great to connect so uh, yeah look, look forward to to connecting. Okay thank you thank you very much uh, one more time thank and you. I hope we can meet again here okay have a great day. You too.